The movie begins by showing a beautiful girl named Tika, who is about to go to her campus by bus. Even though she doesn't come from a wealthy family, she attends one of the prestigious universities in the capital, where most students come from rich families. Tika has an older brother named Duda, who dreams of becoming a director and performing plays in a magnificent theater that many people watch. Tika and Duda have a younger brother named Dodi, who is often verbally bullied by his classmates because he comes from a poor family. However, Dodi always ignores the bullying and tries to deal with it gracefully. Tika and her brothers live with their parents, Danny and Tootie, in a small house in a densely populated residential area in the capital. Danny works as an entrepreneur engaged in small enterprises, while Tootie sells cakes to help meet the needs of their family. Even though they live in simplicity, Tika and her family love each other so much and live happily. One day, Duda took his siblings to a wedding which was located in a luxurious building by riding his old motorbike. But because carrying more than one person is a violation, Tika is finally forced to get off and walk to avoid the police patrolling the highway. Several police officers questioned Tika because she was still wearing a helmet when she walked past them. But she didn't pay much attention to them because walking on the sidewalk wearing a helmet was not a traffic violation. Long story short, Tika and her brothers finally arrived at the wedding and immediately ate the dishes provided at the party, without first congratulating the bride and groom. At the wedding party, Tika met a catering waiter named Banyu, who caught her attention because of his handsome face. Meanwhile, Duda, talking with the bride and groom and several guests, became nervous when they asked about his origins. Apparently, he did not know the bride and groom and deliberately came to the wedding party so that he could invite his siblings to eat delicious dishes like in a fancy restaurant. Because his ruse was discovered, Duda invited Tika and Dodi to run away from the wedding party. The next day, Tika's parents talked about Dodi, who would soon enter junior high school. Tootie suggested that Dodi continue his education in public schools, which are much cheaper. But Danny disagrees with his wife and insists that he will send Dodi to the best school, and of course, he can develop his talents and abilities. Danny believes the parents are obliged to give the best for their children, especially in terms of education. He also asked his wife not to think too much about the cost of educating their children because he would work hard to meet their needs. On campus, Tika has two best friends, Linda and Monica. Tika plans to participate in the International Physics Olympiad with her two friends to get a full scholarship for two years. Even though Linda comes from a rich family and doesn't expect a scholarship, she is happy to help her two best friends win the Olympiad so that Tika and Monica get the scholarship they need. Seeing Tika and her friends, who seemed happy because they were chosen as representatives of their campus in the International Physics Olympiad, two female students named Sasha and Risha became irritated and envious, especially of Tika, who was the smartest student on their campus. The two girls then planned to humiliate Tika publicly by accusing her of being a thief. Not only Tika, but Dodi also experienced similar treatment at his school and was accused of being a thief because he was bullied by students who often bullied him. Meanwhile, Duda was invited by an acquaintance, a man named Rafi, who said that an investor was willing to fund a drama project that he had been planning for years. Rafi then took Duda to a restaurant, where Duda met a middle-aged man named Anto, a member of the council. Anto told Duda that he was willing to fund a drama project, as long as he was allowed to campaign on the sidelines of the drama. Hearing this, Duda immediately rejected the agreement proposed by Rafi and Anto, and chose to leave the place. When Tika was having dinner with her family, she then expressed her wish that her family would be rich. Because if they have a lot of money, their life will be easier, so people will not bully and embarrass them. Hearing her words, Danny then advised his children that the amount of money they have is not a determinant of the happiness they will get. After dinner, Danny decided to relax on the house's front porch until he fell asleep. Not long after, Tika appeared and was about to massage her father's feet. However, how surprised Tika was when she held her father's feet, which were very cold, and realized that her father had died. Tika and her family were shocked and devastated by the death of Danny, a husband and father they loved very much. After her father's funeral, Tika again met with Banyu, who helped bury Danny. Before going home, Tika and Banyu had a short conversation, where she finally found out that he was a student willing to do odd jobs to pay for his studies. The next day, a man named Ilham came to Tika's house and introduced himself as a lawyer who had been trusted by Tika's late father to convey something important to Tika and her family. Ilham then showed Danny's will in the form of a video deliberately recorded by Danny before his death. In the video, Danny mentions that he has prepared a large inheritance for his family. He also apologized to his wife and children for lying to them all this time and revealed that he was actually a rich man with abundant wealth and only pretended to be poor. Furthermore, he said that his wife and children will receive the inheritance in stages, and the money they will receive in the first phase is 500 million rupees. After knowing they would get that much inheritance money, Tuti could not contain her irritation mixed with happiness, because, for more than 20 years, she and her family had to live in poverty because her husband tricked her into pretending to be poor. 
After that, Tikka and her family planned to spend the money they just got to get the next stage of inheritance. They then went to lunch at a fancy restaurant and bought luxury goods. On the other hand, Tikka and Banyu's relationship is getting closer, and they often spend time together. One day, Banyu's motorcycle suddenly broke down, so Tikka accompanied him to a motorcycle repair shop. When Banyu's motorbike was being repaired by a mechanic, Tikka, who saw a used motorbike in the area, asked if the motorbike was for sale. The man who owned the repair shop informed her that the motorcycle was being sold. Although used, the motorcycle turned out to have a pretty good engine and body, so Tikka was interested in buying it. Without thinking, she then bought the motorcycle. After Banyu took Tikka home with the motorcycle she had just bought, she told him that she had deliberately bought the motorcycle for him. However, he immediately refused her gift, saying he wanted to buy something from his hard work. Feeling belittled, Banyu becomes annoyed with Tikka and leaves immediately. Since there was still enough money left in the first phase of inheritance, Tuti bought some expensive jewelry, which she planned to use as an investment. A few days later, after their inheritance money had run out, Ilham returned to Tikka's house and showed a video recording that had been prepared by Danny. In the video, Danny said that the next stage of the inheritance money amounted to 30 times the previous inheritance money. Tikka and her family then felt happy because they suddenly became rich people from the legacy of their late father. Ilham told them that they had to spend the money from Danny's inheritance within 10 years. Because if the inheritance money is still left after passing a predetermined period, then the money will be donated to social institutions, according to their late father's will. After that, Tuti and her family immediately bought a magnificent house worth more than 10 billion rupees, luxurious furniture, and a luxury car. After satisfying their material needs, Tikka and her family started trying to make their dreams come true. While Duda was planning to perform a drama with money inherited from his late father, Tikka went to Banyu and persuaded him to forgive her. He finally forgives her, and they make up again. Tikka and her family's life is gradually improving, and Dodi no longer experiences bullying at school. Tikka makes new friends, namely Sasha and Risha, who now include her in their circle of friends, because she has become a new rich person. However, Tikka's friendship with Linda and Monica becomes tenuous because of the drastic changes that occur to Tikka. In fact, they are in danger of failing to participate in the International Physics Olympiad because Tikka is too lazy to study and skips college just to have fun with her new friends. Not much different from Tikka, who met new friends from rich families, Tuti also did the same. In fact, she often spends time outside the house gathering with socialites. On the other hand, Duda began to worry that the performance of the drama directed by him would fail, so he hired a famous actor for a fairly expensive fee, even though, according to his friends, this was not necessary because it was just a waste of money. When everyone is busy and is rarely at home, at the same time, Dodi, who doesn't have many activities outside the home, suddenly feels very lonely. He suddenly missed the time with his father, when they would all gather at the dinner table every dinner and talk a lot about what they had done all day long. Sometime later, all the inheritance money had been spent by Tikka and her family, so Ilham returned to their house to show Danny's next video recording. However, in this video recording, Danny said that the property he left for his family no longer exists, which indicates that Tikka and her family have spent all the money. They immediately panic because they still had obligations to pay. Duda has already agreed to pay a famous actor with a contract value of 7 billion, while Tuti has promised to donate a large number of funds. Tikka said she still saved some money, but her savings weren't enough to pay their debts. The following days, the entire crew and cast in the drama performance went on strike because they wanted an advance payment as promised by Duda. Because the drama performance was in danger of being cancelled, Duda was forced to contact a man and ask for his help. At the campus, Linda meets Tikka and tells her that Monica plans to drop out of college because she feels pessimistic about getting a scholarship after seeing Tikka's recent attitude, which spends more time at nightclubs with Sasha and Risha than studying with them. Linda said that Tikka might not need the scholarship anymore because now she is a rich person. However, that does not mean that she can act arbitrarily and ignore their dream of winning the International Physics Olympiad. In the evening, Tikka, who is too late, accepts Sasha and Risha's invitation to go to a nightclub. At that place, they forced her to swallow drugs. Not wanting to be caught, Tikka pretended to swallow it and immediately vomited it back when she was in the toilet. After that, Tikka called Monica and apologized for ignoring them. She promised to change and start studying seriously to win the International Physics Olympiad so that Monica could get a scholarship and finish her studies. Long story short, Tikka and her best friends finally joined the International Physics Olympiad, where Tikka also asked Banyu, Sasha, and Risha to come and cheer her on. However, when the Olympiad was about to start, the police suddenly came and arrested Sasha and Risha because they had used drugs and circulated them to other people. Although Tikka and the others were not involved in the drug case, the police asked them to do a urine test to prove that they were not drug users. 
because Tika and her best friends tested negative and did not take drugs, the three of them were finally released. Meanwhile, Duda finally staged a drama with Anto's help, where Duda was willing to agree to Anto's request that he campaigns in the middle of the performance. At first, the performance went smoothly and was well received by the audience. However, when Anto got on stage and started his campaign, a commotion ensued, and the play became chaotic. The next day, the poor were seen crowding in front of Tika's house because her mother had promised to make a donation to them. However, Tuti thought that the number of people who came had exceeded her expectations, so the situation became chaotic because the residents were scrambling to get donations. In the incident, a boy was injured because he was crushed by the residents who were jostling each other, so Tuti rushed to take him to the hospital. Tuti was relieved and took the boy home after confirming that he only suffered minor injuries, and the doctor confirmed that his condition was fine. After all that incident, Tuti and her family were shocked by Ilham's appearance, who came with a man who was none other than Danny's younger brother. Ilham said that Danny also left some money for his younger brother. However, because Tuti and her family had spent all the inheritance money, they were forced to lose their magnificent house and luxury cars, because the value of these assets was equivalent to the amount of inheritance money that had to be given to Danny's younger brother. Tuti and her family finally decided to return to their old, simple house, which they shared with Danny. Tuti, Tika, and Duda finally realized their mistake in relying too much on money, even though Danny had advised them that happiness cannot be measured by their money. When they finally live in their old house, Tika and her family begin to reorganize their lives and try to fulfill all their wishes without neglecting their family and friends, who have always supported them no matter their circumstances. Tika also realizes the importance of maintaining people who will always accept and love her as she is, regardless of her wealth. One day, Tika and her family were surprised by Ilham's appearance, who came to show the last video recording of Danny, which revealed that he had never had a younger brother, and the man they met before was his childhood friend. Danny deliberately tricked them because he knew that his family would waste money when they received an inheritance of billions of rupees. Danny doesn't want his family to be so dependent on money that they no longer care about each other and love each other just because they are busy with money. Therefore, he has planned all of this and hopes his family understands the importance of a family based on love and care because those two things will bring happiness to them. The film ends with Tika and her family getting back the inheritance from Danny, but they are determined to use the wealth wisely and not waste money on things that are not important. The moral that can be learned from this movie is that happiness cannot be measured by anything, including the amount of money we have. Because the measure of happiness of each person is different from one another, the one who determines whether we are happy is ourselves. Even so, happiness will be more meaningful if we try to make other people happy, especially those we care about.